Recording is in progress. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome uh, to this meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee on Thursday, September 14th, 2023. I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.05 p.m. We're meeting remotely via Zoom as uh, permitted by the town of Amherst and the state. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and will appear at a later date on the Town of Amherst CPA website. Uh, I am going to call on members now to make sure that we can hear you and that you can be heard, that you can hear us. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go through the list. Uh, my name is Sam McLeod. I'm the uh, chair. Uh, Bob, can you speak up? Uh, Bob Shaw here. Yep. Thank you. Uh, David? How's in the car? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Uh, Tim? Okay. Yes, uh, Tim Neal and Bob, which uh, who, are you representing a certain group? Oh, uh, anything that involves conflict of interest, I'm representing. No, I <laughs> no, no, no. No, I mean, uh, Bob is our. Are you an at large? I don't know. Or. Bob What's is a new at large member. At large. Oh, he's at large? Yes. Okay. Um, Michelle? Yeah, present. Uh, Matt? I'm Matt Kane. I'm a representative from the Recreation Commission. Wonderful. So we can all hear everyone uh, and everyone can be heard. Uh, we do need a minute taker for each meeting. Uh, I'll volunteer for this meeting. Uh, to be the minute taker just for ease of uh, processes. Uh, and then in subsequent meetings, uh, we can continue. So um, <clears throat> there have been a few changes to our committee membership. The, <clears throat> the planning board, Andy, had Andy McDougall had stepped down. So there's a vacancy on the planning board. Uh, Becky Demling had become an at-large member and has since stepped down from her post in the last week. Uh, Bob Saul is a new member, uh, and we welcome Bob and his experience. Um, he's an at-large member, and Bob, if you'd like to introduce yourself to the committee, that would be fine. Um, sure. Uh, I live here in South Amherst. Um, I am uh, almost retired from a uh, career in uh, agriculture and forestry, and I'm a farmer locally also. Um, and I've been on the FinCom for about six years in a previous lifetime, and then the Ag Commission. So I'm familiar with Amherst politics from a distance. Well, uh, I'm glad you're here. Welcome, and it's good to see you. I know we spoke on the phone back in May, uh, so welcome uh, to our committee. Uh, I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm not sure how long this meeting will go. It may go quickly. The thought was that we would have a meeting where we, uh, last May, we decided to have one during the application process in case there were any applicants who had questions. Uh, our first item on our agenda is to elect a chair and a vice chair. However, we do have some members not in attendance. Uh, Robin Fordham has a conflict with a historical commission meeting and we do have vacancies. Uh, in the past, we have deferred our elections and nominations to when we might have a fuller committee. Uh, and that's fine by me. Uh, that was a recommendation from some town staff. Uh, I'm comfortable uh, continuing to serve as chair until we enact a new one. I would like to hear if, what the committee thinks on that process. If, if they're fine with deferring till we uh, fill another seat or two. Last year, we only had eight members the entire time, but I, I do believe uh, there will be a decision made with the uh, planning board in the relative near term. Any thoughts from committee members on this? Tim? Oh, I was just going to, I agree. Thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> Let's 
continue as we are. And I agree with okay. that. Uh, <clears throat> any other comments from any other members? I can't see all of you. Just thumbs up over here. Yep. Okay. So uh, we will uh, pass by that time period for the time being. Uh, I will continue as the chair pro tem and Tim as the vice chair pro tem. And we will have a uh, probably in our next meeting the agenda, but based on feedback from town staff and also what we've done in the past, it seems to make sense. It's a, a reasonable process. Um, <clears throat> So uh, the next item on our agenda is to approve any outstanding minutes. We last met in May, uh, May 11th, and the minutes are in the packet. Uh, the packet has been sent to all members here. I'm not sure who has reviewed them or not. They were generated by Robin Fordham, who's not here today. Uh, I did review them and make my edits from Robin's template draft prior to submitting them to Holly for the committee. So the current minutes contain my edits. Uh, I'd like to ask any committee members if there are uh, comments or edit suggestions for the existing minutes. None. Um, well, uh, Uncertain, we could seek to approve the minutes if uh, folks are okay with that. I'm not hearing any commentary on the minutes. So uh, do we have a motion? I move to approve the minutes from, what's the date? I'm sorry. May 11th. May 11th. Is there a second? Second, David. We have a <clears throat> motion. We have a second. Uh, any discussion? Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and have a roll call vote on the admittance from the 11th as submitted in the packet. Uh, I will vote aye. Tim? Uh, abstain, I didn't notice the minutes, so I didn't read them. Okay, uh, Matt? Aye. Michelle? Aye. David? David Williams? I, you don't hear me? Uh, we hear you now. Uh, uh, Bob, I realize. I'll, I'll abstain since I wasn't there. Wonderful. So uh, the motion passes with a vote of, I believe, four in favor and two abstain. <clears throat> okay. Uh, every meeting, public meeting, has a period of public comment for uh, opportunity for the public to speak. And that may be distinct from comments that might come in during a particular agenda item, such as application information or other topics. So I'd like to invite any members of the participant public uh, who wishes to make a public comment to do so at this time. You can raise your hand if you wish. Uh, we'll grant you up to three minutes or perhaps longer if, if needed. I believe you raise your hand or if you're on your telephone, I think it's not, you press nine for a comment if folks are attending via phone. Do we see anyone via phone, Holly? I do not see anybody raising their hand at this time. I'm not seeing any comments or hands raised from the audience. I'll ask one more time, uh, just in case there's a miscommunication. If anyone wishes to make a public comment as a participant, uh, please raise your hand. Okay, well, we're sailing along smoothly. <laughs> um, the next item on our agenda is a, a general overview of the CPA process. Uh, this may be of benefit for people who are attending now, and it may be of benefit for people who might be looking at this in the future. Are we able to access my screen, Holly? Um, you are, <clears throat> Yes, you are a co-host, so you should be okay. able to share your screen. Forgive all the uh, items and data on my screen. I'll try to get to the uh, slideshow that I wish to display here. Stay with me, everyone. 
Can everyone see my screen? Yes. I'm seeing a few thumbs up. Yes. See if we'll open a slideshow at the moment. <clears throat> so just a brief overview, and then we can discuss further. Uh, the Amherst Community Preservation Act Committee is uh, chartered to uh, represent, to administer the state CPA program in the town of Amherst. The program is one that is funded by tax dollars. Currently 3% of tax dollars are awarded to the CPA as a <clears throat> specifically for the use of four categories. Stay with me one minute while I change the screen display here to a full screen, if I'm able. Slideshow. Slideshow, full screen. Is anyone familiar with how to do this on the full screen? Stay with me. Well, we can keep it the way it is. So, Sam, if you go to the bottom right of your screen, there's a bunch of icons, yep. bottom right. And the one that looks like sort of a projector screen before the slide bar, yep, press that. Okay, it kind of looks the same, actually. <clears throat> now you have to hide your notes. <laughs> I don't have any notes. <laughs> we'll go like this, there we go. Okay. So uh, the... CPA has four categories of projects that can be funded. Why is this sliding through? Uh, the four categories are historic preservation, open space, community housing, and recreation. We received proposals from applicants, private and public, in each of these four categories. There's a brief description of what they are here. Um, <clears throat> We have a typically a budget in the range of one million to twelve hundred dollars, twelve hundred thousand, one point two million per year. It varies, but it's a large amount funded between various projects. Um, it's allocated between the four categories based on the projects that arise, as opposed to based upon uh, a pre-mandated amount that we have to spend. Uh, the program is designed for the benefit of the community. Uh, and we've been, as a town, I believe, Dave Zomax, since 2011, been having the CPA's membership uh, in our community with lots of great projects that have come through. Uh, here are some examples of some open space projects that have occurred. Uh, Strong House, Evergreens, Dickinson Farmhouse last year, North Amherst Library, the West Cemetery. There's a whole range of projects for recreation projects such as Grolf Park, no River, Kendrick Park, opposite where the pub used to be in the East Street Building, Plumbrook War Memorial. Um, <clears throat> recently, we've had housing projects on our slates, the East Street and Belchtown Road Schools, the Valley CDC on Northampton Road by the Amherst College Football Field, Municipal Affordable Housing Trust, Olympia Oaks, and Wayland quite a lot. This slide seemed to keep uh, they seem to be forwarding themselves. So I'm going to go back to my screen that I have here where I can manage it myself. And I'll hit the open display. Stay with me, folks. So there's a few things that the applicants need to know, and we're going to go on the website in a minute to look. But essentially, there are four categories of available eligible use. Uh, and this chart that I'm showing you right here appears within the CPA plan on the website, which we'll show to you. I'm not sure why these are forwarding. Um, <clears throat> and there's basically a listing in the CPA plan of what you can and what you cannot use funds for. It's very much worth looking at. And the key aspect is where it says, no, you cannot create historic preservation. You cannot uh, have support funds for historic preservation more for open space or for recreation. But this table is helpful. We'll go to the uh, town website. This is uh, fast forwarding, so I may skip past this. Um, in fact, I'm going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something different here. Stay with me, folks.
we're going to go to the CPA website on the town of Amherst, and this is what every one of the applicants should do. You go to the town homepage, you go to boards and committees, A through M. Anyone who's considering applying through for CPA funds should come to this page right here, which is the Community Preservation Act committee page. On this page, we've made a few changes in recent years. You'll see a description of our meetings. You'll see our membership, an overview. And I want to call attention to anyone who's considering applying to something titled the Community Preservation Act plan. This document, which you can you can access by clicking on this page, will have most everything you need to know about. Uh, it will talk about the eligibility requirements. It will talk about the categories of use. It will talk about uh, <clears throat> the approval process. So anyone who's considering applying for CPA funds, the first place they should go is to this Community Preservation Act plan. It is within our packet here if you wish to download it from the town site. You can also see prior year proposals on the left. These are listed by fiscal year. Last year's cycle was fiscal year 2024. That means it started in July of 23 and goes through June of 24. Well, you can click on any one of these years on the left and you'll see all sorts of prior projects that have come before the committee. It can give you an idea as an applicant of the types of projects that have been submitted, how they've been presented. It's quite useful when considering. You'll also see over on the right-hand side here, meeting recordings of the CPA committee. If you wish to look at any of the prior review processes that we've gone through each cycle, you will find meeting recordings here on the right. Um, <clears throat> the first, we have an application that anyone can find by coming right here on the site where it says apply for CPA funds on the upper left. When you click on this, it brings you right to the page where we have apply for CPA funding, a description of what CPA is, what is the committee, an important set of uh, information relating to what you can do with CPA, how do I apply for funds, the CPA plan, and also a listing of all the uh, various supporting committees. If you're looking for a product, uh, a project related to community housing, uh, it's the Housing Authority, and our staff liaison is late Nate Malloy, a senior planner. Historic Preservation, it's the Historical Commission. Nate Malloy is the liaison. Open Space, it's the Conservation Commission. Aaron Jock is our town liaison. And Recreation is the Recreation Committee. Ray Harp is the liaison. If you click on any one of these links to the right-hand side, you can copy the email address and the email address that you copy <clears throat> will be one that is forwarded to the town staff. Uh, it's cpac at amherst.gov, amherstmaps.gov, but you can just click on this and forward any questions related to your project. You'll see on this page, a listing of the proposal evaluation criteria that the committee utilizes. Uh, there's a whole listing here, which also appears on the application. You'll see the submission process that we go through. Um, <clears throat> and again, the email for general inquiries and questions is on the bottom here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the actual application so that anyone attending can see what is there. Uh, this is the actual form from which an applicant submits a project. Uh, there's instructions, a listing of the criteria, and step-by-step. -step. What is the project title? How much are we asking for? Which category? It could be in more than one. Uh, what is the organization submitting the project request, the proposal? Who's the contact person? Street address? Uh, are you available for a site visit? That is to say, if members of the committee wanted to come by, what days are best? Email address? Who's on the project team? If you have a website, let us know. And this is the important portion, the proposal overview. What is it you want to do? Uh, what is it you want to uh, have funding for? A description of the funding that's needed. 
You can upload your budget estimates here, your timetable, urgency of the project, uh, and then a few other questions regarding who is served by the project, is what resources and uh, how will this investment be maintained over time, reference as to whether or not you've worked with committees and any other information. It's a fairly straightforward process. At the end, you click submit. Uh, but if you're going through your application process, you'll want to uh, take a look at this. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go back for a moment. And this is for committee members as well as for uh, potential applicants. I want to display the general calendar that we have this year. Uh, so hold on a moment, please. This is in your packet, but it's also listed here. This is a general timetable, uh, if everyone can see it, for this fiscal year 25 uh, cycle. Fiscal year 25 is indicative that the funds become available in July 1st of 2024, and the <clears throat> that fiscal year ends in June of fiscal year uh, of 2025, so it's kind of an oddity. Fiscal year 25 is actually the current cycle that funds become available next July. So we've had our announcements on the websites. We've opened. The application cycle is live right now. Uh, we're having a general first meeting as we go. And the deadline for any applications, anyone who's considering applying for CPA funds, is Saturday, September 30th. So... Um, that is the date to write down to make sure that you've already uh, got everything ready to, to submit your application. Once we the applications are received, they go to town staff. Town staff will look over the applications for any issues and communicate with applicants as necessary. And then on October 13th, these applications will be distributed to our committee. We do this every year. Uh, the committee then will consider the applications, review them, and come up with questions for the applicants, whatever they might be. Uh, there's usually a fair number of questions, and the staff will organize these and then provide them to the applicants on Friday, October 27th, give or take a day. Uh, the applicants then have a week to respond to those questions. Those responses are provided to our committee. And then we start to hear presentations from the applicants. That is to say, uh, applicants will receive communications from town staff in terms of scheduling. And we have a tentative schedule. We don't know how many applications we're gonna get, but if you're applying for funds, your presentation is going to be somewhere, either November 9th, November 16th, or November 30th, depending upon uh, what category it's in and how many we get. Uh, separately, we have a December 7th meeting, which is an annual public hearing where the public has an opportunity to comment on any of these public uh, applications. Uh, and the committee, after the public hearing portion of that meeting, will begin to discuss and vote on recommendations. We typically take some time Last year, I believe it was three separate meetings. The meet years before it was two. But we have a deliberative process and it will commence in this time period. Essentially, uh, and, and then after we make our recommendations, we send them to the finance committee and then they go to the town council. It is the town council who has the authority to approve the funds. It is not the CPA committee. We make recommendations to the town council. The town council hears from the finance committee and the town council can award funds that the CPA has recommended. They cannot award funds that the CPA has not recommended. And then we'll have a tentative meeting in the spring uh, to review how the year went. That's the general calendar. It is in the uh, meeting packet, so I recommend that anyone in attendance who has interest uh, access that. Um, 
let's get back briefly to uh, some key applicant information. I'm going to attempt to open the slideshow again, and hopefully I can get it so that it will not advance as I'm speaking. Um, there are a couple slides in there that will be of benefit for the audience. So let's open this right here. Here. Okay. This time frame mirrors the calendar, but the, the portion here that I want the app potential applicants to see are the key steps. The first thing you want to do, well, you'll have to have an idea of what you want to apply for, but you want to review the CPA plan. The CPA plan, again, is available on the website. It has everything that you need. Uh, you want to review the eligibility criteria. You want to look at the evaluation criteria. It's all in there. You can look at some previous year's proposals. You can also uh, review the application form. What's important here is that you want to discuss your project with the relevant support committees. That information is available on the website. Uh, here they are again. It's on the AmherstMass.gov uh, CPA board website with the various contact information. Uh, <clears throat> once you submit your application form, it goes to the town. Uh, you're going to be receiving questions from the committee. The applicant presentations the dates will be sometime between November 9th, I believe it is, and December 7th. Uh, and then the CPA committee themselves will deliberate and come to uh, decisions. The funds become available after, after July 1st, it, assuming that uh, they've been approved. There's typically a process in this uh, where the applicant will need to enter into a contract agreement with the town of Amherst. There may be some steps related to approval process, uh, but this is the general time frame for the committee. Forgive me for this uh, slide to advancing. You can download these slides uh, in the packet on the town website. I recommend that you do. One other thing that I want to show uh, the audience is kind of how we initiate our review process. I'm displaying here a form that we have used each of the last two years. When our committee starts to talk about projects, we look at what the projects are, how much they're asking for, and each committee member in their own uh, thought process and deliberation comes up with a general straw poll number of what they think about a given project. This enables us to prioritize which projects are apt to have more discussion required than others. If there's unanimity of agreement, it's, it's an easier process. You can look on the CPA website in recordings. Our last set of deliberations, I believe, were December 8th, 15th, and 22nd. So you can see the process that we use. But this is a form that we kind of go through as we're talking about them. So we'll just back out of that. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to call the uh, attention to of the applicants, again, what's most important at least in, in my opinion, uh, is that you come to the website. If you have an idea, you look over. I'm going to go back from CPA funds. These are This is showing previous proposals. <clears throat> you want to look over the CPA plan. That's really, at, once you have an idea, that's the first thing you want to do. And you can find it again on our website here, town of Amherst, amherstmass.gov, boards and committees, go to Community Preservation Act Committee here, click on it, scroll down. You'll find it in two places. You'll find the plan right here in the middle. This is very important. Uh, and you also will find it when you go to apply for CPA funds, which is what you'll need to do when you're actually officially applying, you'll scroll down and <clears throat> You'll see 
uh, information right here. How do I apply for CPA funds? These are some changes we made to the website last this past summer. Talks about the window. The CPA strongly recommends that applicants read the plan and also contact and consult, consult with the possible relevant town boards associated with their project. Usually that's something you wanna start doing in the spring as far in advance as you can. Uh, that's not always possible, but here are the liaisons. Here is the uh, the town staff, but there's here are the committees that are relevant and associated with it. This page also describes the evaluation process, submission process. Uh, we've had applications come in late in the cycle that have been well thought out and have received funds. It's not mandatory that uh, uh, you have gone through the full processes of review, but it's highly recommended. And again, here's the uh, application form. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's kind of a general, a general idea of uh, information that's important for applicants. Read the CPA plan, talk to the committees, look at the town website, look at previous proposals, uh, and most importantly, consider your project and talk to the relevant uh, town staff that might be related to it. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to look at the audience. We'd like to invite comments or questions from attendees if there are any. So stay with me here while I can see this on the screen. Polly, are you able to see all the audience? I'm not seeing at present yeah. if there are any. There are no hands up in the audience. There are four attendees. So I'd like to ask the attendees again, if any of you have any questions about what we've just gone over here, uh, please raise your hands. I'll wait a minute or two. We're just seeking to give the opportunity if needed for any potential applicants to uh, ask questions. Okay. So no hands, then I guess we're doing okay. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment. We're back on yours, Harley. Hopefully that's easier for the uh, panelists and the audience to see less uh, things here. <clears throat> um, okay. So the next item on our agenda is to review financials. And uh, Holly's put together some information. If you're ready, Holly. I cannot hear you. I think you're on mute. Yeah, but just bear with me one second. Unfortunately, my screen is very tiny and I've got to figure out how to make it bigger here. And again, I apologize. It's might be a little small, but <clears throat> okay. So here is um, we start with the FY twenty four um, beginning balance at the beginning of the year. We're estimating what we're going to take in for. Um, CPA tax for the year, we're estimating a 25% match from the state. Um, that is their current guidelines. And then um, we're taking out what we've already voted and approved 
for FY24 um, projects. Our FY24, currently we have a budgeted reserve. We do have some money set aside if any more projects come in for FY24 that we can use. So our estimated end of year balance at the end of this fiscal year, and I do apologize, that should say 630.24, not 23, would be about $686,000. And then in order to get to the amount of money that we expect or are estimating to have available next year, we're going to do the same type of thing. We're going to add our estimated uh, tax of the CPA that's added to everybody's tax bill. Uh, again, a 25% match from the state. So what we would have available to appropriate is just over $2 million. But then we have to take out what we have already committed to through debt service. Come on. What we've already committed in prior years as debt payments on previous projects that we borrowed of about $520,000 is what we have estimated right now. And that will leave us with a balance of 1.5 million is our estimate um, available for new projects. Um, and just the little note there on the side in the 10% minimum is that um, we are required to put 10% into each of the categories. So the minimum in each category uh, based on 1.375 million of new revenues would be 137,500. Um, so in open space and recreation, which are combined um, community housing and historic preservation, we have to commit at least $137.5,000 to each one of those categories um, per the CPA guidelines. Uh, we haven't really had much of a problem doing that lately. Um, debt alone uh, usually satisfies that minimum, but that is a requirement through the CPA as well. So right now, um, until we get um, our actual money from the CPA uh, match for FY, it's FY23, but it will come in in FY24, we're estimating about $1.5 million available for new projects. So again, this is the FY24 estimates, um, and then our FY25 estimates on what we'll have available. And then the previously, you know, approved and bonded projects, we're estimating right now um, 520,000 of the debt payment will have to come off of that available balance before we can um, approve any new proposals. So does anybody have any questions on that calculation? I see Matt has his hand up. I cannot see that anymore. So you go right ahead. Um, so financial year 24. So the money is being distributed for those already, right? That's yeah, the ones so we voted for. Right. So, the so two why why is the assessed local tax an estimate hasn't that isn't that the the tax we collected last year no that's the taxes that we will be collecting this year so we distribute the money before we receive the tax we do it is based on estimated receipts oh i didn't realize that's how it worked yes so we 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 estimate those very conservatively um so that's why we often end up with you know, a, a larger beginning number because we estimate conservatively. I mean, in, in some years we've gotten, you know, maybe 400 plus thousand dollars from um, a state match, but the state tells us every year basically what they think the percentage will be and we keep it low. But yes, it is based on estimated receipts. And then, and then I guess the other question was, um, so the year end balance is, I guess, higher than I expected. Is that because we received more money or we distributed less? Uh, we would have received more money in 23. 
Okay. That's and a... likely by the time we get to we get to actually voting the proposals, this number will become an actual number. So there will likely in in the past we have gotten more than this estimate. So this number will likely go up a bit once we actually receive our FY, it's our FY23 match that we receive in fiscal year 24. Okay. Tim, you had your hand up earlier. Yes, uh, just a quick request. Holly, can you send your that chart that we're looking at on the screen separately to us? Um, it would have been included in your packet. Everybody should have gotten an email oh, really? um, with oh, the packet and it was that. the calendar was in there. The chart was in there. The agenda oh, okay. was in there. It was in the materials that I already sent. Yep. All right. Sorry. Thank That's you. That's OK. <laughs> and for those in the audience, the packet materials can be located from the Amherst On the Mass.gov Boards and Committees Community Preservation Act Committee. On the right hand side, you'll see uh, a listing along with agendas, there's meeting recordings and there's meeting packets, I believe it's called. You click on it, there are folders listed, click on 2023 and you'll see 914, that is to say September, this current meeting, September 14th. So any of the materials that are being discussed in this uh, meeting were, are available to you there uh, for your download and uh, consideration. There, uh, there was, I assume most of the committee members are aware, I forgot to mention this, so um, Sean Mangano has uh, departed as an employee of the town. He was our liaison and the town finance director. So uh, our committee did interact with Holly and uh, Sean last, last spring. Uh, Sonia had departed in um, January, so... Uh, Holly is the full liaison. You're doing triple duty, Holly. <laughs> You're doing what Sonia did and what you used to do and what Sean used to do. Uh, so I'm very grateful that uh, Holly is here to assist. Um, I guess I have a, a general question, Holly, related to just finances. At, once a year, we ask the... Um, applicants who have already been awarded funds to provide updates to us. Uh, are we apt to get just a delineation maybe later in November or so of how those are going? Um, absolutely. I, I don't think that we've sent out that communication yet, but I can certainly work on getting that out. Um, it is, uh, I'll, I'll make myself a note here. Um, yes, we do typically once a year ask for an update. For applicants, it's in the uh, in the application process. It's indicated that there'll be the request will come in. Uh, but this uh, 1.5 million, that's uh, that seems to be a higher number than I had anticipated. Uh, I hope that it uh, stays true to that amount. That's uh, that's pretty uh, large amount of funds. Um, do any other members have questions related to the uh, financial update? Uh, okay. Thank you, Holly. That's uh, quite helpful. And uh, the only other thing I'd point out here is I see the budgeted reserve of 164, 463. That's the fiscal year 24 budgeted reserve. That's the amount we moved uh, last May 11th. Um, and that retains currently as a fiscal year 24 budgeted reserve that can be spent in fiscal year 24, which is from now through, can be awarded between now and <clears throat> June 30th of next year. Uh, but we also can vote that in, should we wish, into fiscal year 25 funds. Right. If we don't read, if we don't use it prior to June 30th, it will, it will go back into, um, the bucket, so to speak, and that would increase what we have available for FY25 if it is unused. So okay. we could potentially have another $164,000 if we chose not to use it in this current fiscal year. That's correct. Okay. 
But we can't use any of the 686,000 other than the 164. That's correct. Okay. So even though that's that's extra money, it it, it is is all going to get transferred into 25. Right. It, so if you if you have not allocated it or reserved it, it has to stay in the fund balance. So the the six hundred and eighty six that we're suspecting will end the year with is not available. Only the hundred and sixty four is currently available to you to be used in FY twenty four. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions from committee members regarding the financial update? or any other comments related to it? Not seeing any hands or images. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Holly. <clears throat> um, the next item on the agenda, I added a North Zion Church update. Um, as a refresher for those, oh, uh, Michelle, excuse me, I see your hand is up. Hi, Sam, yeah, I just <clears throat> wanted to say that I have to leave at Seven. So if there's any votes that I need to take part in, I didn't know if we could move them forward, but um, I didn't want to mess up any quorums sure. by having to leave uh, a little early. We have a quorum, uh, have even a quorum. if you have to depart, uh, because uh, we have six members here and okay. our quorum quantity is five. Uh, thank you so much for bringing that to my attention now, because uh, that's potentially significant if there were only five of us here. Okay. Um, I don't, what, right now, what we're about to do is to uh, discuss new information that's been provided uh, to us uh, in relation to the North Church, and we'll see how that discussion proceeds. Yep, excited to hear it. So yeah. please proceed. So, um, as an update, the North Church was a proposal from last uh, fall that uh, most of the members here uh, reviewed and discussed. And then we, when the time came for voting on various projects, the project was tabled without decision uh, based on a uh, vote of the committee uh, and requests for additional information from the Historical Commission for general planning and from the uh, various members. <clears throat> um, the Historical Commission did reach out to town staff who had worked uh, in support uh, of the of the North Church. Um, <clears throat> as a committee, we didn't uh, receive additional uh, estimates because they've been doing their own work. But I did reach out, uh, given that we had a project that was tabled, I reached out to the committee uh, a couple of times this summer and to, to the uh, North Church, excuse me, a couple of times this summer and invited the North Church to present to us in person or to provide any documents uh, that they wish to provide on any planning updates or uh, new information that they might have uh, in, in response to my invitation so that our committee could be um, aware of you know what's been transpiring with that. Uh, we received the documents that are in our packet. So the response to the invitation was to provide the written information uh, related to the project. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> I'd like to just open up the general discussion related to the update in the committee of what's been received. Um, I, I read it as a, there's a new uh, estimate. It's an estimate uh, related to a roof with uh, a set of plans and supporting documents. Matt, I see your hand is up. Yeah, I see some people in the attendees that are probably relevant. I don't know if they were going to speak before we discuss it or not. Um, like C. Kyung, and I don't know if Matthew is Matthew Conqueron because it doesn't have his last name. That's uh, probably who it is. Um, they didn't indicate that they wanted to present, but we've made them aware that they're welcome to raise their hand and speak. 
um, and we could certainly do so. Um, <clears throat> okay, good. Because I have I, I I looked at the um, and we can ask page. questions if we wish. Yeah, I guess I I would have questions. I don't know if anyone else has questions. Um. We certainly can ask questions and invite uh, someone in from the audience to uh, respond to questions. If uh, if they, uh, who who would you like to ask a question to, Matt? Um. Well, are we just are we just going to assume that everyone's read the document and just dive into questions? Is that is that what we're doing here? Uh, we're. We're having an update where we've informed the committee of the materials that have been provided to us related to the table project. And I thought it made sense for our committee to be able to uh, review and discuss any questions. And the um, applicants are in attendance for questions if we have some. OK, should, yes. should I just start? Sure. You can start talking about the update, or you can. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm just talking about the the North Church Info PDF, which looks like an email from Matt Conqueron about a scope of work. Yeah. And um, so I, I guess I'm. The the there seems to be two parts, but I only see sort of a clear description of the the roofing part. Um, and then there must be some other carpentry part that hasn't been fully described. Like as there's beams that labor on three workers, $54,000. Um, so I'm just trying to understand like, what is the, what is everything that's going on here? Sure. <clears throat> um, I haven't spoken to the applicants uh, regarding specifics related to the proposal. We can seek to ask questions. Uh, I see Seek Young and Matt in the audience. Would you be uh, interested in responding to the questions, uh, Matt or Seek Young? We can bring you in. Do you, do you want me to bring them both? Yeah, let's let's bring them in. Respond and they should be able to come in. There we go. At least so we can hear them. I don't know if they're actually listening. Yes, oh, there we, we were. Go. Yep. Okay. So, um, Matt, what, what was it you asked? Well, we do you like a description. I, I'm the... sorry. I mean, uh, Matt Kane, what was it that you asked? Um, so th there seems to be two parts. There's there's a quote from um, Shumway Services, which looks like a quote for taking the roof materials off and replacing it with CDX and asphalt shingles. And there are other items. So what are the other items to do with the, the, the carpentry and the and labor on three workers? Wel welcome, Matt, uh, yeah. Matthew, and Seek Young. Hi. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the, there are four purling beams that are rotten and need to be replaced. Uh, the bearing for the roof is a little unusual. Um, and it, the, this is described in the architect's work from last spring. Uh, What's going to have to happen is uh, we're going to have to take the fascias and the soffits off to church, replace four of these purlin beams, and then put everything back together. Uh, the bearing for the bottoms of the rafters is not over the wall plate. It's actually about 16 inches out from the wall. Uh, <clears throat> and you know, so they had an architect that did uh, drew plans of this and descriptions of it. Uh, I I have a very clear idea of what it is. Okay, uh, good. <laughs> uh, 
there are there are four beams that actually have to come out and get replaced and then the fascia boards and soffits have to be put back on and then the gutters have to be put back on yeah so does this cover everything that is sort of required with the roof and also the sort of rotting beams and also the rotting trim work and so on yes it should cover everything um at the top it doesn't actually cover repainting the walls of the church right they take care of the fascia and soffit and the beams and the gutters um put a new roof on uh and from the freeze board up everything should be fine okay and there i, I do remember there were some other some other issues other than just painting there were some issues at the base of one of the um pillars i think at the front and maybe um in some of the uh light wells for the basement i can't remember exactly if there was other things that were urgent or but clearly the main thing that was urgent was the roof and the roof structure yeah no the basis of the church is very sound from what okay I good think. good um uh, i don't see anything that needs correction um, okay uh, it's just what it looks to me like is the church was framed by a covered bridge builder, not a house builder. So it, the the frame of the roof structure is a little bit different, uh, with more of an overhang, uh, and the ice damming has caused these bearing purlin beams to rot that that are a little bit out from the wall of the building. Um, we know okay. how we can fix them, you know, it's just getting adequate scaffolding up there to do it. I, okay, it, good. Technically, I don't think it's a very difficult job. Uh, it's just getting the scaffolding out there, getting the beams, taking it apart, putting it back together. Yep. Another question I have is, um, so it's a pity that Robin isn't here representing the Historical Commission. I don't know if Dave Zymek has any opinion, but um, is is this in other historical um, uh, projects that we've considered, it's been a consideration as to whether the proposal is, I don't know, in line with historical preservation standards? Um. Was that a question for me? Uh, you, I guess you could answer it if you if you can answer it. Well, I guess uh, the main issue from my perspective is the roofing material and whether it's appropriate for the historical preservation. Uh, we priced slate, which is outrageously expensive. We priced metal roofs, um, vinyl slate, um, pine shingles. Uh, and this is really the only cost effective roof we can get on to stay within a, a budget. Um, historically, I think from 1826 to about 1900, the church had pine, various pine shingle roofs. And then from about 1900 to 1944, it had a couple of asphalt roofs similar to what we're proposing. And then in 1944, the current slate roof was put on which is now in need of repair. So what we're proposing is to go back to what they had in 1943. Um, we just, the slate is just so prohibitively expensive. We can't get the job done uh, with slate. Um, so historically, we're going back to 1943. Dave Zomack, I see your hand is up. Thanks, Sam, and and thanks, Matt, for the question. Um, so, I don't have a definitive answer on the the historical commission review piece, but I I do think um, the church would need to consult with with um, Nate Malloy and the historical commission on whether there would be a formal uh, approval needed to do some of this work or not. Obviously, it's to protect. The structural integrity of this historic uh, structure, but whether it would, you know, whether it would be 
you know, categorized as any kind of demo or not, but we could easily answer that question for for Seek Young and 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 Matt as you move through through this process. The other thing I just wanted to remind folks is that normally, uh, particularly with a with a, an invest, if if the committee and recommended this to the council, there would be a requirement um, in all likelihood of a historic preservation restriction on the building or, you know, part of the the building and parcel. So that's something I don't know if that came up in your discussions, Matt Corcoran with. Uh, with Seek Young and and the the leaders of the church, um, we have a tie. I just assumed that that would go with the funding. Um, I, okay. we haven't actually sure. discussed it, but uh, I thought yeah. it was part of the process. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So I think those are the two two uh, items that I wanted to to just touch on, and we could work with. You know, we've met with Matthew and Seek Young and the leadership of the church, and I think we could continue to kind of. Um, you know, work on those two pieces with you. Okay. So we should set up meeting with uh, Lay and somebody from CPA. Well, I would defer to the committee on that, Seek Young, and and you know, it's it's in their hands whether they decide to to recommend your mm -hmm. proposal or not. So okay. we'll, we'll wait on their their review all right i <clears throat> i'm not seeing tim neal did we lose tim holly One, two, three. it looks like we did let me just check quickly let me give him a quick ring um uh, he is not in the participants any I was just looking to see if he came back into, oh, there he is. He came back into the attendees. Uh, oh, so good. hang on, let me bring him back. Sam, I stepped away Thank for you, a Sam. second. Was there, a minute ago, I stepped away. Was there any discussion of timing um, on this, how urgent this is? I mean, I know we were talking about this in 22. Here we are in the fall of 23. Um, can any of this work actually get done before the snow flies, or is this really a twenty calendar year twenty four project at this point? I think we are yeah. we are hoping yeah. that a reserve fund distributed this year because when last time we attend the committee meeting with the Chris Foley, who happened to design architectural and uh, roofing design, he mentioned to you committee that urgent work has to be need to be done and partial of the uh, roof before the winter come. So now that almost a year has passed uh, as a uh, winter is approaching. So we like to get a work done as soon as possible. And soon as the fund is available to our church. Well, I don't think, um, <laughs> Um, for a couple of reasons, I don't think this job can take place until next April or May. Um, the first reason is these beams have to be ordered and they have to be dried out. They're going to be really heavy. And we've got to get them up two stories to get them in place. So we need to get 100 or 150 pounds of water out of them. And the second issue is we can't get the painting we need to start in the spring because you, you set up the scaffolding on one side, you go through the various processes, you finish the roof, you do the finished paint and you take it down, you repeat it on the next side. But it, we can't paint as we're only six or eight weeks away from not being able to paint. And then we've got to leave the staging up all winter. Uh, so I think that for two reasons, it's really a project that needs to start as soon as the weather breaks first thing in the spring, um, you know, April or early May. And then we have, we're, able, we're gonna be able to do a nice, clean, complete job before the end of the summer. Uh, Tim. My apologies for leaving the meeting. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Glad you're back. Okay, but I'm back. 
Uh, I guess that's a key question for me is whether this applicant is requesting funds from the reserves for a fiscal 24 or whether this is a fiscal 25 request that would go into the hopper and compete against all the other fiscal 25 requests. Um, and what I'm hearing is if this project can't really start realistically until the spring, I think it should be a fiscal 25 project and um, apply along with everybody else. So I just don't know where the paperwork is on that, but I just think that's my opinion. Uh, but I just didn't know where we were in terms of the cycle. Thank you, Tim. Uh, the reason I we waited for some time patiently to receive updates after the project had been tabled uh, it was my opinion that we needed to, if we were to have any discussion related to this project, it needed to occur before any uh, new applications arrive, because we may be having new historic preservation projects coming up. Uh, and so from a general time period of our own discussion, Tim, um, that was my thought process in following up what we had requested, which was an update, and recognizing that we're going to be receiving new applications soon. Uh, everyone on the committee can have their own opinions. Uh, I, My thought, not as chair of the meeting, but as a member, is that uh, it seems to me that if uh, fiscal year 25 if spring, May of 2024, that's only two months away from July 1st of 2024, which would be the commencement of funds availability for fiscal year 25, which is the new cycle. Uh, from a timing component, Tim, I think there's, uh, uh, I hear your what you're saying. Uh, yes, Matt. Yeah, I guess uh, that's a good question. And I'd like to hear from Matthew about whether starting this at the start of July 24 would make sense. I mean, the problem with 20 getting starting it in April of 24 is several fold. One is we have to go through a separate CPA approval process with the town council and us um, in order to allocate the funds before July 1st, 24. And secondly, we only have 163,000 available and the bill is 179 so you would have to figure out how to plug that gap or defer some of the cost or something until um july 1st um 24. so matthew what do you have a comment on that um well i have a couple of comments um i think the difference between what the the town had available in 179 the church uh, feels they can raise through donations so okay. they can uh, contribute and cover the difference in the project um honestly it i mean i wouldn't want to get forced into a situation where just putting the staging up to start the job at a certain time and then just pay rent by the month to have it sit there but that would be the situation we're getting pushed into where, okay, we'll put the scaffolding up and say we've started the job, but we're not really actually doing anything until the weather allows us. And then we're just paying rental by the month on the staging. I guess my question is, if you started in July 24, would that make sense? Or does that not make uh, sense? Um, I think that's starting a little late in the year. Uh, for us, um, uh, if it was anything like this summer we just had, the first half of the summer was nice hay drying weather, and the second half was horrible. Um, I would, construction-wise, if I see a window and I, it, it's good weather, I don't want to have to sit around and wait. I want to get it done. Um, you know, and, and to try and squeeze this stuff into a budgetary process of dates, okay, um, makes it a lot more difficult. Uh, okay, and then starting in spring of twenty five, what would be the implication of that? Uh, well, that would be a normal cycle. Most building projects 
get timed, or at least in my history, we time projects to start in the spring. And um, usually we can have them wrapped up before the end of the summer. Uh, and uh, we don't run into, um, you know, cold weather and trying to get paint done and, and some of the difficulties. But is, it, is it okay to wait that long for this project? Uh, yes. Um, right now, the actual leaking is occurring outside of the building. Um, because of the way this is framed, it looks horrible. Uh, and there is leaking, but it's leaking outside of the footprint of the building. Uh, okay. Uh, it's not actually leaking in the building. Uh, and uh, But it, it looks terrible from the ground. Uh, what yes. I... What I'm hearing is that the urgency is uh, not as high as we thought it might have been last December. I, I think say, that's true. I think everybody was looking at this from the ground. It's, it's very difficult to get up into the attic of the church and see some of this stuff because there isn't a floor up there. It's you know crawling around on beams on your belly like you're in a two-story tobacco bar. And if you get off of that beam, you're going right through the roof to the floor. I mean, to the ceiling, to the floor. So there's, it's very difficult to wiggle in there and see what's actually happening. Um, but my impression is um, the leaking is actually occurring outside of the wall of the building, um, not inside the building. Um, but it looks really bad when you stand at the ground and take a picture at it and look at it from the ground up. Um, and it's had numerous repairs over the years. You can see where people have put in a piece of sheet metal here or there, a block here or there to try and keep it going. And um, I was never involved in it. I remember probably 50 years ago, they hired me to cut out a little elliptical window for them. Uh, but there have been many carpenters in North Amherst have worked on the building over the years trying to keep it together. Now, now the uh, the estimate, the documents that you provided were estimations, and there was references to potential additional expenses related to plywood, uh, potentially from the uh, uh, roofing uh, organizations. Yeah, yeah, from uh, Shumway, yeah. yeah. Um, what we did do is we multiplied his estimate times 1.5%, expecting to see about 5% inflation between now and next spring. So hopefully that will be enough to cover. But we do have members of the church that are contributing and will carry a share of this project. It's not, the church is not asking the town to pay 100% of this. Yeah. Um, so I, I think we're good. I mean, you never know until you do it, but I think we're okay. Does the committee have any additional questions for uh, Matt or C.Q. at this moment? Can I make a comment in addition to Matt Cochran? Uh, I heard that budget have to be used by June of uh, 2024. And Matthew Cochran mentioned we have to order beams beforehand to give a time to dry. So if a good weather permitting in April, we could order the beams now and give a time to dry it out. If contractor, the roofing contractor available in a spring, then we could use the fund by June of 2024. And that's my thought. Well, thank you, Sikyong. Really we could probably be finished by the end of June. Yes. yes. So I think it that's the, uh, but oh. when we were. Uh, the funds don't have to be used straight away. Because, because work will, will be starting and then funds will be accumulated, then, you know, will be uh, construction and the roofing. 
that work is, I don't know, thank you, will take more, more than, than two months, months right? right? Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, 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 yeah. The big issue that I'm concerned about is ordering the beams now, getting them inside the back of my store and getting them sticked and putting on a fan on them throughout the winter. I'd like to pull 100 or 150 pounds of water off of these beams before we try and handle them up in the air, two stories up. Uh, and if I can get them soon, I can get them dried out for an early start in the spring. But if we order them in March and we try and put them up in April, these things are really heavy. <laughs> uh, they really need time to dry out. It, it could conceivably be the following spring. Um, Tim, I see that your hand is up. Uh, yes. Uh, I would suggest we uh, move on. Uh, my personal opinion is that I think this applicant needs to fill out the appropriate paperwork uh, so we have all the information for a fiscal 25 application. Um, and we, when we have our discussions, we can always discuss whether to move it up for fiscal 24, but I just don't see any more value on us debating that right now. Mm -hmm. um, I, for one, have some things that I've got to do, but uh, that would be my suggestion. Do, does anyone have any other questions for the members that we, the uh, participants that we brought in? So, um, Matthew and Sikyong, thank you for um, coming into the panel. And uh, if Holly, if you can uh, place them back as attendees. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I I guess um based so on that still... discussion. We still have one person in here. Um, I see Sik Young still here. Are you able to do the moving, Holly? Yep, I am trying right now. It just doesn't seem to be working, but I think that. Does not seem to be okay. Going. Do we just lose somebody again? Okay. okay. There we go. So, um, I, yeah, I think as a committee, our the reason I wanted to bring the. Uh, add this to our agenda is that we had asked for updates. A lot of time went by. We sent, I sent an invitation and town staff had communicated with them to invite them to present any information they have, whether it be in writing or in person. Uh, so I wanted the committee to be informed of the current latest status, which we currently have. Our <clears throat> status as a committee is we can do a few things. We can do nothing. It's a table project, and we don't have to um, do anything with it. Uh, we can seek to decline uh, the proposal and invite the application, the applicants to apply again in fiscal year 25. We can do nothing and ask them to apply again in fiscal year 25. Um, the concern exists that we're about to have a new set of applications coming in uh, starting after September 30th. Um, <clears throat> my, what I'm hearing from uh, today, which is somewhat new, is that uh, the water is, the sense of urgency is not as high as it was last spring. That is to say, the water is leaking on the outside. 
uh, and there's a lead time. This would not get done between now and um, the December anyway. Um, uh, I share Tim's thoughts, but it seems to make sense to um, seek an application in fiscal year 25. That's one opinion. I'm curious what the other panelists who are here think who have listened to the full process proposal from um, from the applicant. Matt, I see that your hand is up. Yeah, so I just want to say I really appreciate uh, Seacombe's work on this and uh, Matthew Cochran's work on this. And I think we're in a much better, much clearer understanding of what needs to be done uh, than we were in November, uh, which is great. Um, and I agree with uh, with Tim and Sam, the important new piece of information that the water is leaking outside the building and that this doesn't necessarily need to be done as soon as possible um, makes me agree with Sam and Tim that this should probably be a financial year 25 proposal, which would mean basically for C. Kyung to reuse much of her proposal and put in this new information we got today. And then when it comes to uh, November, we can discuss it and approve it. And hopefully um, that will all work out fine. Rather, because it seems not necessary to go through a whole separate process just for this one project, if it's not super urgent. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, Holly, I see that your hand is up. Yes. So forgive me. I was not uh, a, as involved in the process last year. Um, what was, so the dollar amount that was set aside in the budget of reserve, is that just what was available and unspent or was that a dollar amount that they were thinking was going to cover this project? Uh, the committee set aside through our processes, 164,000 and 300 or 500 into budgeted reserve. Uh, there had been last year a larger request for like 650,000. Right. It then came back as a smaller request with the HPA associates uh, for 158,000 to do a slate roof four feet up and fix the soffit. And we included within that 5,000 potential for um, HPA restrictions. <clears throat> so we had set aside on the chance, on the possibility that we might receive information that would wish for us to proceed further uh, to have those funds available and give us flexibility. We extended that flexibility in May of this past year when we met uh, to allocate and place 164,300 into budgeted reserve for fiscal year 24. So it's been since December, uh, nine months, 10 months. Um, and the information that has changed, what we have received is what we're receiving today. Um, <clears throat> the one other thought that enters my mind is that uh, from a clarity standpoint, um, there's still not certain clarity from my standpoint related to what the request would be. I see the fine work that's been done uh, by the contractor who is has been working with uh, the church. Uh, it seems to be a well thought out, but <clears throat> the applicant had previously requested a hundred and fifty. 8,000 to do the first four feet in slate. This is a proposed, th this estimate, which is new information for us, is one that is shingles architectural, and we don't know whether or not they would align with the uh, historical commission. Um, Robin did communicate that um, there are sometimes. Uh, I don't know if fastball is the right word, but non-slate roofs that look like slates that may or may not 
uh, align, whether they be architectural shingles or asphalt shingles. But I don't, I don't, I don't believe I have enough information to uh, make any determination on this in terms of proceeding forward. Um, it seems to me it makes sense to invite the applicant to provide a um, a more concise application for fiscal year 25. Uh, I'm curious what the other committee members think. I've heard you before, Tim and Matt. Um, I just thought I'd, we don't have to do anything. We can let it sit um, and not bring it up again. Uh, or we could say, provide closure by saying, well, we think it makes sense for an entirely new application to be provided. And I realize it's an unusual circumstance that we're discussing this at this point in time, but it needed to be discussed now rather than two weeks from now. Uh, yes, Dave. I saw David Zomak's hand up. Is yeah. That in yeah, I just wanted to jump in, Sam. It seems, you know, from listening to the to, to the various comments, um, I too wanted to follow Matt and and kind of acknowledge the work that Matthew Corcoran and Seek Young and 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 the uh, leadership there have done. I think they've come a long way, um, but it does seem, you know, kind of logical to have them submit at the deadline by the end of September. From a staff standpoint, reviewing this potential historical um, commission review. Um, going through the entire process for this proposal and taking this through you and then all the way through the uh, town council is, you know, that that is a significant process to get this through, whereas um, bringing it through the, the, the annual process just seems like the right thing to do, given also that Matt Corcoran, you know, uh, indicated that taking a little more time, doing this right, having the time to dry out the various beams and then and then stage the project, you know, perhaps, you know, starting in the summer of, if it was funded, you know, uh, in the summer of 24, and then, you know, there really isn't a pipeline. They could take part of 25 if this project were funded to finish. So I'm just hearing, you know, support for that. Can you clarify that again, Dave? I'm not sure I understood what you meant when you said the annual process. Meaning they come with other, uh, they they have all the materials they need, really. They could, uh, they could pull out the narrative that they submitted before with some adjustments. They have new cost estimates. So it's not a real heavy lift to pull this together by the end of September and make your deadline in my... Oh, for an application for fiscal year 25. The next annual process, yes. Uh, David Williams, can you hear us? I hear you. I, I'm interested in your thoughts. Well, listening to the comments and the request and everything, this particular project is, um, uh, this is basically the second year that we have uh, gone through this process. Uh, one of the things, well, some phases of the process. One of the things that we talked about last year, and I think most of you are familiar with this, the conversation was about water leakage in the building and what have you. And I think all of us know that if we are experiencing a problem with water, you need to stop the water if you're going to try and save the building. Now, you, we have, there were suggestions that um, the church should come back and go through the cycle again for the proposals for um, 2025. I think I'm correct in saying that. So if that's what we're suggesting, we're looking at if we're going to fund this, you're looking at a project that probably would not start before 2026. 
or July of 2024. Five. Five. 24 yes. at the earliest, 25 at the latest. So if it's, if we feel that this project is a legitimate uh, uh, project, then I, I think we need to try and move it forward. Did, did you hear, David, what they indicated about the water leakage, that it wasn't an issue from the, their perspective, that the water leakage is outside of the building, not inside? Well, I kept hearing that outside of the building, but yes. uh, that's a little different from what was said last year. Correct. Correct. It's new information. Yes. Uh, Tim. I would uh, like to formally make a motion that we move this project or request the applicant, or that we as a committee abandon dis any further discussion for fiscal for the funds in fiscal 24, and we have the applicant reapply for fiscal 25. So might that be rephrased to indicate that we, uh, you are making a motion that we not award any funds for fiscal year 24 at this time? Is that what you were saying? I do. Well, not, yes. for you. I, I am do. not. I I am not comfortable with awarding funds from the reserves in fiscal twenty four for this applicant. I would like to propose that the applicant reapply uh, in a fiscal twenty five application, which David felt, and I agree with him, that they could just piece that together very careful, very uh, uh, easily, and they would compete with other requests I in this. I, I understand what you're communicating. I'm wondering what the phraseology of the motion might be. Uh, okay. I move that uh, the committee not expend fiscal 24 funds. And I move that, and I further move that the applicant reapply in the fiscal 25 cycle. Um. I'd like to make a discussion, a, a comment, if I may. Okay, I mean, I don't know if that's I think yeah, somebody needs to... properly, but might uh, we might we move to not award any funds for the fiscal year twenty four proposal, and in and strongly invite that the applicant apply again in fiscal year twenty five. Holly, your thoughts? I said somebody please second that motion, so you can have the discussion. Which motion? Tim's motion. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second it. I see Thank a second you. from Bob Saul. Okay. Uh, is there a discussion? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm happy to recommend that the uh, North Church submit in the 2025. I don't think we need to do anything about the budgeted reserve because we just don't have to do anything. It'll automatically disappear. If we do something, if that's, if we do something, uh, don't do anything with it between now and the next year, but. I don't, th I don't think, I, I wouldn't vote to pass a motion to, to cancel the budgeted reserve, but I would vote to pass a motion to recommend the North Church to apply for fiscal year 25. Right. Do do you the motion was uh, that's what I was getting at earlier, Matt, and bear with me, both of you. Uh, do we wish to, uh, for lack of a better term, turn down the fiscal year twenty four application, irrespective no. of fiscal year twenty four funding? Our committee retains the fiscal year twenty four budget items. Do we wish to decline the application that was presented in fiscal year twenty four? and recommend application for, strongly for fiscal year 25, which I believe is what Tim was referring to, uh, or do we simply want to table, keep it tabled, do nothing with it, which may or may not come back? Yes, Tim. Well, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Let me see if I can rephrase again. My intent is this project was tabled last year. Correct for the use of the potential use of the 24 reserves. 
and enable for, for that enable for that to happen we as a committee would have to discuss that project this year and go through the process all the way up to the town council and have them make the approval, but it could only be to use the fiscal 24 funding. I do not feel that is uh, what we should do. I feel we should uh, keep the reserves, but not but right. able or deny the tabling, whatever you want to call it, detable it, <laughs> and have the applicant reapply in the fiscal 25 cycle. So I'm not quite sure what wording to use, but I don't want to have any further discussion about fiscal 24 dollars for this project. I, guess I understand it's... what you're saying, Tim, and it okay. sounds like the, the motion would be to um, uh, to award no funds to reject the proposal from to, to reject the fiscal year 24 proposal without awarding funds and to recommend that they uh, strongly recommend that they apply again in fiscal year 25. That's wording is fine with me. That's my intent. Yes. Uh, would you like to make that a correction on the motion or? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> sure. Do you want to say it or do we need to? I'm not cognizant. Uh, okay, I, I move that we reject uh, the this project for fiscal 24 funding and in, and highly recommend that the applicant, therefore, if they wish to proceed with their project, reapply for fiscal 25. Is there a second for this? Rephrasing. We'll second again. Uh, discussion. Any comments? Uh, yeah, on, on I, I just don't understand what, what what's the purpose of rejecting it. I, I think we could just say recommend reapply. Like we could. Who knows what's going? Who knows what's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen next month. But um, okay, I, I I'm happy not to talk about this ever again. Um, but um, I don't think I need to shut the door. So instead of rejecting the project, just uh, not award any funds at this time and ask that they reapply. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dave Zomack. Yeah, again, I was going to kind of agree with Matt on the rejection. I, I don't think you really need to formally reject it. You could simply vote to take no action or encourage That's fine. them. Take no action and encourage yeah. them to uh, reapply during the normal process, which is okay. ongoing right now, and and yeah. submit a new FY twenty five application. I, uh, that action also implies kind of the, a little bit of negative on the proposal. I don't think there's any negativity toward the pro proposal. It's simply you you would like to see a new proposal, a fresh proposal in the new fiscal year process. Thanks. Okay. Um, <clears throat> That makes sense. I understand what Tim is saying. I understand what Matt is saying. Um, procedurally, do we, if we're going to seek a third motion, do we need to do anything with the existing ones that are out there? We need to amend them. I believe so. I you will we'll either have to amend it or you'll have to vote on it and change so, the motion. I'll, I'll move to amend the current motion to read that we will. Uh, the committee will take no action, uh, no further action on the, or no action on the uh, existing North Zion Church fiscal year 24, 2024 proposal and strongly recommend and invite them to uh, apply again in fiscal year 25 with a, uh, a, a more focused proposal. I second that. We have a motion and we have a second uh, discussion. Holly, I see that your hand is up. Nope, sorry, didn't mean that. Discussion, Tim, thoughts? Uh, that's fine. I, I, Frankly, I didn't know what exact wording we wanted to use, but I think that's the intent. Now, just let me be clear. We still have 163,000 in reserve. So per chance, that 
architect or builder was wrong and come spring the thing is leaking inside we can because we're tabling it we can still discuss right and if we don't spend it another project comes up they might we have the reserve and ability to have that discussion correct Correct. we're not touching the current reserve which is available for spending between now and june of right to the end of June of 2024, we could use right. it in the current pending application cycles or for something different. But prior to the end of June, we will have to uh, either roll it into fiscal year 25. Mm-hmm. Uh, and really, we should do that earlier in the year so it doesn't Great. disrupt the time. Right. So, so I, I think the reworded motion is fine. Uh, Matt, any other uh, any other discussion? Okay. We have a, I, I can't see you, David Williams. I don't know if you're ready. That's all right. Go ahead. I, I hear you. I'll let okay, you know. Very good. It's... I'm just checking in. So we have a motion and we have a, a second. And the motion again is to take no action on the uh, existing North Zion Church fiscal year 2024 proposal uh, and strongly uh, recommend and invite that the um, <clears throat> applicant reapply uh, with a focused proposal for fiscal year 2025. Um, I'd like to proceed to a vote if there's no other uh, comments. Uh, Tim. Aye. Matt. Aye. David Williams. Aye. Uh, Bob. Aye. I'll vote aye as well. So the vote is five to nothing. And uh, we will communicate accordingly to the church. Um, I I will um, agree with David Zomack's comments, and I believe Matt, you may have said this as well, of the uh, fine progress and work that has been made by the church in terms of considering options, um, and. Uh, there's certainly some new information from what existed last December. Uh, so that's uh, that's the last item on our agenda. I hope that the committee can uh, <clears throat> thank them for uh, their thoughts on this. I'd again like to welcome our new member, Bob. Um, I don't know when we will meet again. We will be receiving quite a number of applications by October 13th. They will go through the town first, uh, who will look them over and we'll be needing to come up with questions. We'll be awaiting a few new members. Hopefully we're lacking a member from the planning board currently and we're lacking a an at-large member. Uh, I believe they both will be here at that point. Uh, so I don't have any other agenda items that I did not foresee. I'd like to open the floor up to any comments any of the members wish to make before I adjourn the meeting. I don't see any uh, comments or members. I'd like to thank everyone for attending and participating. Welcome again, Bob. Uh, it's glad to uh, glad to see you and glad that you're here. And thank you all. Uh, I will adjourn this meeting at 7.48 p.m. Thanks. Take care. Good night. Good night to everyone.